Those, <laughs> not what you want to see on uh. a hike. A 500 pounds worth of pasta tucked away in the woods near a creek. The mystery that detectives in New Jersey are trying to solve. Casa Bonita watch. I love it. There might be breaking news across the state, but we're going to keep a photog there all weekend. <laughs> okay. In three, two, one. It's going to be a bit warmer and drier today. Plenty of sunshine. Highs will be in the mid to upper 70s here across northeastern Colorado this afternoon. Denver right around 75. Slight chance for an isolated storm or two this afternoon, but again, warmer and drier to end the week. We'll see some low 70s on Saturday, upper 60s with a few late day thunderstorms on Sunday. In three. In three, two, one. Skies are clearing out here across the state, and we're going to see more sunshine today. Highs will be in the mid to upper 70s, so a warmer afternoon for us here in town. Tomorrow, a little cooler, low 70s. Chance for a few late day thunderstorms here as we head into the weekend, but the risk of any severe weather is going to be pretty low. Uh, nice and warm early next week, 75 on Monday. Okay, Ben, sorry, the last one. In three, two, one. After a round of some pretty strong thunderstorms yesterday, we're going to see some warmer and drier weather today. Mid 70s for highs in Denver today. Mostly sunny, slight chance for an isolated storm this afternoon. Tomorrow will be in the low 70s and then upper 60s Sunday afternoon. Six fifteen. Welcome back, and uh, we're taking a look at some of your national headlines. We have new developments in the Justice Department's investigation into the classified documents found at the home of former President Trump. The New York Times reports prosecutors have issued several new subpoenas and have obtained the confidential cooperation of a witness who worked at Mar-a-Lago. That witness reportedly gave investigators a picture of a storage room where Trump held classified materials. Investigators are trying to determine if he tried to hide some documents after the Justice Department issued issued a subpoena for their return. Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas is facing new scrutiny. A new report shows a GOP mega donor paid two years of private school tuition for a close family member of Thomas. He failed to disclose those payments, which is a violation of the high court's longstanding rules. The report is the latest revelation into Thomas's questionable business dealings. Congressional Democrats are pushing for the Supreme Court to adopt new ethics rules. Hmm. Well, detectives in New Jersey are noodling this one after someone dumped 500 pounds of cooked spaghetti pasta in the woods near a hiking trail. Take a look at these images. One woman took photos of it and posted to Facebook saying this was the latest case of illegal dumping in the area. Apparently it's been a problem. All the talk on social media, though, got the attention of city leaders. It took 15 wheelbarrows to clean all of this up. Still unclear who did it. 
or how they did it. Uh, reaction to the mess was hilarious on Reddit, though. One wrote, lead suspect is a guy named Al Dente. Yeah. Uh, Real Al. Those are good ones. <laughs> Another wrote, we should send the perpetrators to the state penitentiary. No, no. <laughs> and I'd like to think that the DPW came and twirled it all away with a giant oh, fork. Is that Andrew and the Dinbert who wrote that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. the spoon, right? You need and the, the spoon, and the spoon. Yeah. Where are the meatballs? I know, yeah. the giant meatballs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know the song. Those rolled oh, off down yeah. the hill. Oh, Those yeah. are gone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe someone, this could be weather. Right? Cloudy with a chance of meatballs. Oh, that's maybe maybe, yeah, that's maybe yeah. it is that. It's coming to life, yeah. <laughs> we have a oh, new so uh, beautiful start to our day and gorgeous weather here as we head into the weekend. Today is going to be a warmer, drier day for us now here, just about 618. 40s this morning. We're going to get to right around 55 degrees, though, by 8 o'clock. 60s by 10, and then low to even though some upper 70s across parts of northeastern Colorado. Today, Cinco de Mayo, May 5th. It's also our average last freeze day here in Denver. And when you look at our Super 7 day, we are going to be above freezing across the board into next week in the early morning hours, quite a few 40s. But Last year we had snow on May 21st, so it can happen, but at this point things are looking pretty good. We will see a little bit more snow for the mountains, bit of a rain snow mix here, especially late tonight into early tomorrow morning. 40s right now, skies have cleared, obviously a lot of sunshine for that eastbound drive. Winds are southwest right now at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Again, you're going to find more 40s here up and down the I-25 corridor early on. A little colder in the mountains this morning, just above freezing there as you get into Georgetown. Uh, Frazier 36, it's probably going to be pretty busy at Loveland Ski Area today and through the weekend with it being the, the last weekend of the season. Winds will pick up a bit more so though tomorrow. Today you're going to find some gustier conditions across parts of the southern front range. That's where fire danger is going to be pretty high today. We have red flag warnings going into effect here at midday until late tonight. So high fire danger there. Wind gusts likely at around 50 to 60 miles per hour. Future cast wise though, take a look at how pretty it is uh, through mid morning should be at about 65 degrees by 10 1030 and then low 70s by lunchtime. Good patio weather, a few building clouds this afternoon. There's going to be a slight chance for an isolated storm or two, mainly over the northeastern corner of the state. I'd say spots like Fort Collins, Greeley, Sterling. You have a better chance of picking up a few of those storms and then we'll drop down into the low 60s by about 8 o'clock tonight. Early tomorrow morning, 40s and again some 50s to kick off our Saturday. Again, you'll see that chance for some light rain and snow up and through the mountains. There will be a few storms, a few pockets that could produce locally some heavy rainfall uh, out west there today. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, low 70s. We'll see some sunshine and it will be a little breezy. We'll see a slight chance for a few late day storms each day as we head into the weekend. Sunday is going to be a little cooler, some upper 60s Sunday. Saturday, though, 72 and a beautiful morning in store. If you're heading out to Wash Park for the Furry Scurry, Denver 7 is a proud sponsor. I'll be out there emceeing. I'm going to bring uh, Yogi with me. We should be at about 56 degrees by 9 o'clock and then mid to upper 60s right around 11. Next week, it's warm and dry to kick off the week, Jason, Monday and Tuesday. Cooler with a better chance of showers by the end of next week. All right, we get our first look at what is happening on 285 right now. Let me show you where it is right now on the west side, just west of C-470. It's closed between Parmalee Gulch and the Morrison where the Ford is. Take a look at the camera on Air Tracker 7. This is a truck that was well, like a fifth wheel trailer and it just demolished totally demolished. So this is the outbound side, the technically the northbound side of 285 going down to C470. This is the southbound side going up into the hills. That side is also closed down. It looks like they could open southbound lanes, but northbound is going to be closed for a while because that is just a lot of cleanup that has to be done. And that is just totally demolished right now. So let me take you to the camera back here at Parmalee Gulch and you can see this is where the northbound traffic is going to be diverted onto Parmalee Gulch Road. Some folks are turning around going back up the hills. So let me show you where you can, how you can get around it either using Parmalee Gulch over to Kit Ridge and then down 74. Obviously, you can get up to I 70. You can go down to Deer Creek Canyon Road and get around it off of Turkey Creek. So those are ways to get around it. Looking a lot better across downtown. All lanes are open there at Mile High. Still waiting for the right lane to open here on eastbound I 70 at Peoria with some slow traffic coming in from Havana. Congress is still divided as the federal government gets even closer to running out of money. Why one Colorado representative went against his party's plan mm. to resolve it. And some big hearts with those rubber soles. How Crocs is giving back to health care workers starting today.
625 right now. Starbucks will face questions from the National Labor Relations Board later this year. It's over complaints made about anti-union activity at the first Starbucks to unionize here in Colorado. The store on Rock Creek Circle in Superior voted to unionize last month. The company later fired the barista who started the union drive and the NLRB wants to know why. Starbucks has denied allegations of anti-union behavior. The hearing will be in September in Denver. Crocs is giving back to healthcare workers. The Broomfield based company is giving away 10,000 pairs of its rubber shoes, socks and charms. This is the fourth year of the free pair for healthcare program. So you can nominate an incredible nurse or healthcare worker in your life starting today at noon on Crocs website. It was clearly a message and I shouldn't be forced to create it. He would make that cake for, for somebody else. He will not make it for me. A Colorado baker and a customer he turned down remain at legal odds. We are looking back at the previous ruling with the cake making case potentially going back to court. And it is almost coronation day for King Charles. We'll take a look at the last minute preparations ahead of a ceremony we have not seen in decades. Good morning. You're watching Denver 7 News at 630. It's going to be a little warmer and drier today. Plenty of sunshine out there this morning. Mid to upper 70s for Denver, Fort Collins at near Greeley. Uh, 80s across parts of southeastern Colorado, so pretty toasty. Slight chance for a little severe weather, just clipping parts of northeastern Colorado here today. I'll show you what those storms look like. The timing of it here today coming up.
Looking at part of 285 here between Parmalee Gulch and Morrison, what you're seeing here is the uh, rescue crews that are helping out, as well as this front loader here. And you can see all this debris. So this is the northbound side coming from Parmalee Gulch down to C-470. And look at the southbound side. There's still all kinds of debris. So I was thinking the southbound side could reopen. Maybe they can after they sweep it up. But there's a lot of debris. It looks like the truck, the trailer, was going across the uh, wall here. But the uh, camper is all totally destroyed. So we have the to expect 285 to be closed down for quite some time. There's a lot of damage to clean up. Let me show you quickly on the map what we're talking about out to the west side of town. 285 closed down again between Parmalee Gulch and Morrison. Now to a new chapter in a lawsuit against a local baker who refused to specially design a cake ordered by a transgender woman. Jack Phillips is asking the Colorado Supreme Court to take up his case after an appeals court ruled against him. Attorney and Denver 7 reporter Jessica Crawford is joining us. And Jessica, you followed this case, the baker claiming this is about freedom of speech. That's right. So the owner of the Masterpiece Cake Shop does not want to create cakes with messages that he does not feel comfortable expressing. And that includes refusing to create a cake that represents a gender transition. So Jack Phillips is trying to take his fight now to the Colorado Supreme Court. After multiple lawsuits throughout the years, Masterpiece Cake Shop owner Jack Phillips is fighting to get back into court once more. Can the government force me to express messages that I can't in good conscience express? In June of 2017, the U.S. Supreme Court announced it would take up a case in which Phillips refused to create a wedding cake for a gay couple. The same day, attorney and transgender woman Autumn Scardina called Phillips' shop and requested a cake for herself. I designed the cake and told him it was going to be a pink cake with blue frosting. Scardina then expressed what the cake meant to her. At that point, I shared with him that this cake to me is, is a celebration of both my birth and the fact that I am transgender. And so the colors have significance to me, but obviously they had no inherent message or significance to them. We were told that the colors were symbolic of a changing from a man to a woman, and it was clearly a message and I shouldn't be forced to create it. Under the Colorado Anti-Discrimination Act, it's illegal for places of public accommodation like retail stores to discriminate against protected classes of people. Protected class includes transgender status. Scardina sued under the law and a trial and appeals court ruled that Philip violated the law, in part because it said the pink and blue cake did not convey a message attributable to Phillips and the cake's message was inextricably intertwined with Scardina's status as a transgender person. Phillips is now appealing to the Colorado Supreme Court. I'm just hopeful that it's encouraging to everybody to understand what their rights are and that the government shouldn't be able to uh, force people to speak messages or um, convey messages that they don't want to express. As Scardina waits on whether the Colorado Supreme Court will take up the case, she has this message. Well, he agrees he would make that cake for, for somebody else. He will not make it for me, only because I'm transgender. And as soon as that stops, I, I think the world is a better place. Now, Phillips is represented by Alliance Defending Freedom. They're also representing another Colorado resident who sued to avoid having to create wedding websites for gay couples. Now, the Supreme Court of the United States is going to be releasing their decision in that case in June. But legal experts say that it's very likely that our conservative Supreme Court will make the decision that many business owners will be able to deny services to a wide swath of people based on their right to free speech. Live from Lakewood, I'm Jessica Crawford, Denver 7. Thank you, Jessica. Congress is running out of time to strike a deal on the debt ceiling. House Republicans passed a bill last week to extend the deadline if spending cuts are made. Colorado Congressman Ken Buck was one of four Republicans to vote against that, though. He said the cuts proposed by House Speaker Kevin McCarthy don't go far enough. The Democrat budget, um, if you project out 10 years, uh, brought us to $58 trillion of debt, which is absolutely absurd. Uh, one, we may very well default on our debts as a result of having $58 trillion of debt and trying to service uh, the, the amount that we borrow on, on that. Uh, but two, um, the Republican plan brought us to $53 trillion of debt, which is almost as absurd as the $58 trillion. And in reality, there's, there's not a whole lot of difference between those two uh, in terms of 
uh, our ability to to operate uh, the, the the functions that people have become accustomed to in this country. President Biden has invited McCarthy and other top lawmakers for a meeting at the White House next Tuesday. Meanwhile, at the state level, two housing bills we've been following are moving forward in the legislature. Although lawmakers are running out of time, the session ends Monday. The House will hold a third reading today on the controversial land use bill. This will be the last step before a final vote. It then goes back to the Senate. The House added several amendments, including reinstating accessory dwelling units, ADUs, and higher density development near key corridors and transit areas. The Appropriations Committee will also talk about a plan to cut property taxes. Tomorrow, this has been a big talker. It was approved in the Senate yesterday. If it passes, the future of property tax policy would appear as a ballot question this November. More affordable housing options are coming to Denver, though. Agape Church is opening the new Charities House apartments this weekend on Welton Street. The building includes 36 apartments for low-income ex-offenders and will be supported by the church's Community Outreach Center. Pastor Bob Wolfolk and his wife say Charities House will also provide wraparound services. We started out working with um, homeless ex-offenders as they were exiting out of the judicial system and as we work with them in transitional housing and they would transition but they had nowhere to go and so we had the vision to do permanent housing so this weekend charity's house will have its ribbon cutting ceremony emceed by denver 7's micah smith the wolf will say the entire community is invited well, the day has finally arrived. We are just hours away from the coronation of King Charles. There will be a ceremony tomorrow full of all the pomp and pageantry you would expect. King Charles and Camilla, the Queen concert, will take part in a procession followed by a ceremony at Westminster Abbey. As we take a live look there, it is the first coronation to happen in Britain in 70 years. ABC's Inez de la Quatera has a preview. This morning, the UK gearing up for a celebration more than 70 years in the making. King Charles's coronation already drawing royal superfans. More than one million people expected to line the streets of London. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Members of the royal family seen arriving for rehearsals at Westminster Abbey. Princes Louis and George and Princess Charlotte all in tow. Prince Harry will also be attending, though his visit will be short. Very quick trip for Prince Harry, maybe even just 24 hours in the UK as he flies in, attends that coronation ceremony, skips everything else afterwards and gets on a plane straight back to LA. On Saturday, the military, led by King Charles's sister, Princess Anne, set to put on a show with a procession for their new commander in chief. It's a show not only for the King's armed forces that he's the head of, but also showing the best of Britain and the Commonwealth on the world stage. Then on Sunday, a star-studded concert. Four-time Grammy winner Lionel Richie, just one of the many artists set to perform. This is this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so you know to be a part of it is everything. Meanwhile, officials also beefing up security in what could be the largest security operation in British history, hoping to keep potentially disruptive protesters in check. This after Buckingham Palace went into lockdown on Tuesday when a man allegedly threw what appeared to be shotgun cartridges onto palace grounds. The price tag is raising eyebrows, reportedly costing taxpayers an estimated $125 million. They could be paying for it themselves. And over 2,000 guests will attend the coronation inside Westminster Abbey tomorrow. First Lady Jill Biden will be among them, along with other foreign dignitaries, European royals, and public servants. In de la Quatera, ABC News, London. Yeah, and you can watch live coverage of the coronation right here on Denver 7. But you are going to need some coffee or highly caffeinated tea to get you up early for this one. The proceedings will happen uh, starting at 3 a.m. our time. There's seven hours ahead of us in London. You going to watch, Nicole? Are you going to get up that early? Mm, no. Those are the days I sleep in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 50s here early this morning. We'll be in the upper 60s by about 11 and then some mid to even upper 70s for highs today. It'll be a little warmer, a little drier, more sunshine for us today. A few afternoon storms are possible. I'll show you that here in just a minute. 64 though in Evergreen today. Estes Park here at 56. Mid to upper 70s from Denver north up toward Fort Morgan. Uh, warmer than average conditions continue to cover our 10 day forecast and you'll see that here on the Super 7 day. We'll 
we'll show you that coming up in just a few minutes. With the warm weather though to the south and some gustier winds, we do have high fire danger covering pretty much all of southern and southeastern Colorado and still Jason looking at some pockets of heavy rain for the mountains where we could see some aerial flooding. We have some uh, progress now being made on 285. I'm still a little surprised there was so much debris on the uh, southbound side. Technically, I call it south and northbound because 285 is an odd numbered highway, so it runs north south even though in this area it runs east west. So that's why a lot of people ask that question. Uh, but the uh, southbound side, the westbound side technically has reopened. Take a look from uh, Air Tracker 7 right now. And this is the debris. So this is the eastbound or northbound side uh, here. This is the trailer and the truck that was just wiped out here in this crash trying to get down to C470. But you saw some traffic on the southbound side. So those lanes are open, but that northbound side is going to remain closed. So take a look at the map. Most folks are using either Parmalee Gulch or Deer Creek Canyon to get out of it. You can also use obviously I-70 if you can get up that way and then come back on C-470 over to Morrison. Celebrating Asian and Pacific Islander cultures at the Denver Zoo this weekend. What you and the whole family can check out there. Also some classic board games like maybe Scrabble yeah. uh, are going back to the drawing yeah. board. The revamped versions to help more people get in on the fun. Welcome back as we approach 645 this morning. Designers are getting ready to show off their fashion and couture style. Denver Fashion Week starts tomorrow and the week will kick off with some local flair, including from designer Sky Barker Ma. I featured her designs on In Good Company last year. She says you'll see lots of metallics in her designs this year. A lot of pieces that are highly textured. Um, I've always loved fabrics, and so you're going to see 
a crocodile vinyl embossed uh, short skirt and also a long skirt, one in a beautiful metallic blue and then one in a, a cream and gold. She operates out of uh, Stanley Marketplace in Aurora. You can check out her website, skyair.com, although both sky and air have an E on the end. And you can see her designs tomorrow night, 7 p.m. at the Brighton. You can find tickets and the full schedule at denverfashionweek.com. I want the dress that she was wearing in yeah. that interview. That I know. So fun. is so fun. Yes, uh, four video games are entering the World Video Game Hall of Fame. See if you remember these. Uh, Computer Space is the first commercially available video game. It was actually a predecessor of Asteroids, and it's oh, very yeah. similar to that game. Uh, Barbie, Barbie Fashion Designer is being inducted because it was the first game marketed specifically to girls. The Last of Us, which is the game that was made into the HBO series, mm -hmm. is being inducted, and then Wii Sports, which if you oh. can't, can believe, 17 years since Wii Sports debuted, uh, Wii Golf, Wii Bowling, how many lamps have been yeah, knocked we over tennis. playing Wii Sports? We dance, yeah. yeah. Oh, so fun uh, still to this day. And f in my house, we play board games, though. So three iconic board games are getting revamped here. New versions of Scrabble, Trivial Pursuit, and The Game of Life. Hasbro has redesigned these specifically hmm. to make them easier for senior citizens to play. Uh, they'll have bigger <laughs> game pieces that are easier to, <laughs> to grasp and larger fonts on the boards. Makes sense. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. And uh, and then this is fun. Trivial Pursuit will have generation specific trivia. That's good. Uh, so you can t decide what age you want to play and, and yeah. you know, then you know the references. Uh, and then the game of life will have different generations for that game too. So your player will, you, you pick your generation and then go through specific life events related oh, to that generation. Yeah. Uh, okay, right, I feel good. like this is not just a senior citizen thing. How hard was it to get the little pink and blue people mm. into oh, the yeah. tiny little, car, little, car, little yeah. peg people? Yes. Oh, yeah. Same thing with right. the triangle wedges in, into the, into the, the trivial pursuit. pursuit. Yeah. <laughs> I think you guys are the age they yeah, want to Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the it was a challenge <laughs> in a challenge, which that's really right. drove exactly. me crazy. We're going to go play yeah. trivia at some bar somewhere and we're yeah. going to yeah. kill it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got your roads and weather covered, I'll there tell you, you what. <laughs> Beautiful out there right now. Skies have cleared out. More sunshine now at just about 648. We're looking at clear skies up and through the high country. Beautiful view from Long's Peak. We have seen a lot of snow melt though this week. It's been 50s and 60s for the mountains and today is going to be another pretty warm one. It will cool down a bit though this weekend. Skies clearing statewide after we had a few thunderstorms roll through town yesterday. You're going to find temperatures climbing well into the 70s here today. And when you look at our weather headlines, warmer, drier today. Wow, I really set you up for a tease there. A few late day thunderstorms are possible and a few of those could turn severe across the northeastern plains. I'm just going to throw an ellipses, you guys, on every map and dun dun dun, you'll see what's going to happen. Uh, we could see a few of those turn a little severe. I'll show you that here in just a minute. Mid to upper 40s, 